How's it going, Dazzlers? Welcome back to Daz Games. And uh, sorry I've been away the past few days. I've been having very important meetings and shit. And um, it's all good, though. It's all good. It's all it's all coming together nicely. <laughs> I've been giving a demo here called The Letter, and it's apparently uh, in the in the mail they said it, it was inspired by things like The Grudge and Corpse Party and stuff, and it's quite disturbing and shit. So we're going to play this game and see what it's like. I think there's a Kickstarter um, campaign for it. Let's get it started down here. Let's see if this game is worthy of Dazzler's attention, though. Let's go. Fucking shit. That's not how you start a game. <laughs> Woo! Oh man, fucking jumped. Oh, the Emmett Grand Mansion. Okay, it was built for Lord William and Lady Elizabeth Emmergrand. Both well known for their compassion and generosity, never failing to expand and helping hand to anyone in need. Humble ambassadors of peace, beloved by their people. The season of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hands of the Great Plague. Their riches and legacy were henceforth passed only to the, on to their only child, Lady Charlotte Emigrand. She was orphaned at the age of four. The mansion stood since 19, 1620s and witnessed to a very long history of joy and pain. After the mysterious disappearance of Lady Charlotte, the great house was left abandoned. And that is when it began. Surrounding villagers spoke of, of seeing and hearing unearthly things. Cries and howls filled the nights. Nights and hearsay of a mysterious woman that roamed, the, roamed aimlessly. People who dared enter the halls were simply never heard from again. Even after 400 years, the stories remain much like the house itself. Whispers about once great house, its legend and its curse, still fall upon the villagers' ears. However, Briar Realtor Corporation is convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, the corporation decided to place the property on sale. How she do? <laughs> like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside wait to be discovered. By brave souls, no matter ha no matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. No, oh, don't zoom in. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right, I know I didn't know what was going to happen there. Good luck, Isabella. Okay. Hello, Isabella. Are you there? Where are you? Immediately, I recognized the anxious, jittery voice coming from the other end. Oh, hey, Isabella! Oh, hey, Rose. I'm at St. Gordy High. What's the matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? It's the mansion, silly. I'm here and you're late. Jeez. We're on a shift together. You promised. Oh, my God. Don't tell me you forgot. We were planning on leaving... You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? You chickened out. <laughs> Look at her face. <laughs> Calm down. You know I take my promises seriously. I'd like to believe that, so hurry up and get here. This place is huge, a bit too quiet since nobody's lived here since, like, forever. But beautiful nonetheless. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know, I just wish I could live in a place like this. It really takes my breath away. It's about to. <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumours say that it's haunted. Jeez, never mind the rumours. Ghosts aren't real after all. That's when people die when they say that. And even if they are, which they're not, they can't do anything. They're not. They're nothing but spirits. You don't know that. They might be listening right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to use their supernatural ghost power curse on you. <laughs> no offense, sweetie, but that's a bit bit of a stretch. Ah! Believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Right. Anyway, get here ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being on my own. Fine, fine! Let me just finish up here. I'll be over there soon. Okay, see you, bye! Bye, bestie! Rose still charming as ever. Who was that? 
I look up from my phone to see Becca. Hey, Becca. That's fucking Stephanie from Lazy Town. That's not Becca. She gives me a questioning look. Oh, that that was Rose. She's an agent like me. We're scoping out that big mansion down at Asylum Village. Ah, no, Anslam Village. Today's sort of a grand opening to the public. The corporation wants us to check it out one last time before we let potential buyers tour it later this afternoon. A mansion? You mean a big spooky mansion you're telling everyone about? Did you keep telling us how it- Oh my god! It just gave you the creeps and you'd have to go there? Well, I did promise Rose I wouldn't ditch her. And besides, a job is a job. You gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. <laughs> oh, she laughs. She snickers. What's so funny, Ooh. bitch? Oh man, that's creepy, don't... <laughs> Nothing. It's just I didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds out so out of character. I mean, no offense, but I thought you'd back out. You've been freaking out about that place for being cast and all. Man, they're really building the tension, aren't they? Isn't your mantra mortality and personality beliefs over money? No. Not all the time because of the rumors Brea Reality is desperate to sell the lot and the agent who lands the deal is going to get a big bonus. I could really use the extra moolah. <laughs> Mama called last night, Papa isn't getting any better, and they're asking for more money to help with the bloating hospital bills. A synthetic look crosses Becca's pale face. Yeah, give me money, bitch! Life back home is tough, huh? A little bit, yeah. It wouldn't help if I was the only one of the family who had a job. Tough was an understatement. The burden of feeling eight months and unsettling Papa's rested on my shoulders. I barely have the money left for myself! It used to be easy back when Papa was in good shape. Ever since he was diagnosed with cancer, uh, he had no choice but to leave his job. I just wish my drunken older brother would lend a hand. <laughs> oh, bless me. But Lord knows if that'll ever happen. Okay, she's got an ill dad and a drunken brother. I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles the past few weeks. She crossed her arms and glimpsed at the fort. Stop eating junk. They're cheap, but they're not good for you. You don't want to end up in hospital like your father, do you? She is right! Her voice rises as she scolds me. It's clear that the, it's a command, not a request. I'm not entirely sure if I should be happy or annoyed. Uh, she's just looking out for you. I'm glad someone's looking out for me, but Rebecca's demeaning attitude can be such a pain at times. Tell her then! She's more controlling than Mama. And that says a lot. Yeah, I'll stop you. Yeah. Batch. I grumbled, but she didn't seem to care much. She gives me a warm smile. Good. Look, if you need anything, tell me, and I'll help any way I can. You don't have to do this alone. Maybe I can lend you some money, and you can pay me back whenever. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. Plus, um, you're a batch. Uh, you and your pride, but suit yourself. The office stays on the table, though. I nod in response. She takes a quick glance at the wall clock on the clock <laughs> well enough chit chat lunch is ending and my students will be back any minute we'll catch up later wait is she is she a fucking teacher good luck with your clients she seems too young to be a teacher i reckon she's trying to work out the lesson plan for next week but her eyes are distant and she's and she doesn't seem too attentive or on whatever the book okay so she's not really paying attention it's obvious something else occupies her thoughts. You sure you can manage on your own though? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. You shouldn't even be working right now. Oh, she's back, shit. Oh, hush dear, don't you worry about me. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. <laughs> drink some medicine, what is that shit? I hesitated for a moment. Becca and I are neighbors. She was, she was the first to welcome me when I moved here to England a couple of years ago. She's brazen, feisty, and always had many stories to tell about her students. We quickly became friends. And with my family staying in the Philippines, she filled the void and became sort of a sister to me. Becca's, Becca's had a cold for a couple of days now, and despite my advice to take the week off and rest, she went ahead to work anyway. What a bitch. I caught her trying to sneak out this morning. Since there's no stopping her, I volunteered to drive her to St. Goody High School 
where she teaches history to rowdy teenagers. Not exactly the easiest job in the world, but I guess it's per perfect with her mysterious and somewhat bossy persona. Oh, Bell! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Becca clicks her fingers, snapping me out of my thoughts. Seriously, lady, I'll be fine for now. Just go to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. I'll call you if I still feel bad and you come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. She gives me a reassuring smile. A sigh. Defeated. Alright, I'll see you later, okay? Mm. She nods. Oh my god, this is the longest goodbye ever. Of course! With a wave of goodbye, I leave her alone to her classroom and her thoughts. And she evaporates. My car's parked in the street just outside of campus grounds. The mansion is some ways out in the countryside as I pass by a couple of buildings I'm about to turn on the radio when my phone rings again I pick it up without looking pick it up I neatly tuck it in my ear and my shoulder Rose? guess again that voice Ash? Bingo! hey what's up? <laughs> just checking if you're still cool later this evening you mean about that thing with Zack? Yeah, it's the premiere of that indie movie he's been working on for ages. He's really excited to watch it with his friends. And by friends, he means us, apparently. Yeah, no, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll be there. Cool. I'll see you later. What time do you want to get off? Around 4, 6 p.m.? I don't know. It's the first day of the opening house of Emigrant Mansion, and we're excited quite a few... Expecting quite... A number of potential buyers are be books the whole afternoon. Emigrant Mansion. You know it? The big Jacoby Mansion at Enslam Village? I'm on my way there now. On your own? <laughs> They're really trying to make this a big deal. Yeah, well, Rose is already there, but yeah. I see, it looks like the scaredy cat finally toughened up. Shut up! Oh my god! I can hear Ash chuckle from the other end. I'll see you later. Drop me a call when you're done. Whatever. Batch. Stupid Ash. Always teasing me whenever she sees the chance. I'll show him who's tough. Oh, Ash, um, Ash is a boy. <laughs> it takes a few more minutes before I finally get to the infamous mansion. Oh, it looks nice, though. I have to admit, it does look wonderful from the outside. Yet, that doesn't mean... That doesn't nothing to hide. Okay, shit. I'm panicking now. <laughs> The neighbors nearby, the neighborhood nearby is desolate. Everybody keeps their distance out of fear, horrified at the thought of falling under the mansion's curse. Somehow it makes me feel sad. The lack of human presence just makes this place even more eerie than it had any right to be. If it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place is going to be at night. Parking my car along the vast green fields, I make my approach. I'm rummaging through my bags for the keys when I notice that the door is slightly ajar. Rose must have left it open. <sighs> that Rose! Entering, I found myself completely aware of my surroundings. Oh, this is nice! They cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusted antiques, searched every nook and cranny and crevice, and made it spick and span. All for the sake of making the mansion more etiquette to the modern day lords and ladies. But no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. I think it looks quite nice. As though it was going to eat you alive. If you ask me, they should just leave this place alone. Some things in this world are better left in peace. Never to be disturbed ever. Is that beauty and the fucking beast up there at that window? It is, isn't it? Rose? I call out. Rose, I'm here. Where are you? She's probably fucking dead. I know it. My voice echoes softly through the hallways. Oh, who am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'd hear me despite the deafening silence. She could be all the way the other side of the mansion for all I knew. I reach for my phone and dial her number. The number you have reached is not in service. Not in service? What do you mean it's not in service? We were just talking a while ago! It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? Or maybe the ghost did hear us talking and the s and spirited her away, right? Right? Why did she do it to herself? No, Isabella, don't be ridiculous. That's so stupid. She's probably wandered off deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping to connect this the time. The number you have reached is not in service. Okay. 
But no, to no avail. Oh boy, I have a very bad feeling about this. Rose, if you can hear me, please come out. Come on, Rose, this isn't funny. You know, this place gives me the creeps. No answer, this is going, <laughs> this isn't going to work. This place is big. She should, could be anywhere, I need to start looking for her. I'll take a deep breath before venturing on deeper into the mansion. <sighs> Taking a couple of steps forward, I notice something move by the hallway above the grand staircase. What? What the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? I can't see anything! Not funny, I'm leaving you if you don't come out. Silence. Not coming out, Hannah, fine, I'm going. Okay, that was a lie. She's still my friend, I can't really leave her here until- FUCK HER! I dial the number again, hoping she'll pick up this time. Come on, please, give me something. Please, Lord. Yes, finally! It came through. Ah, oh, thank God. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She didn't respond. Oh! There was a heavy static coming from the side. I doubt she could hear me. Rose? Come on, where are you? I ask again and the static starts to settle. Attic. What? Why the attic? Oh, he got cut off. Man, do I really need to go there? With how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there, but why was she there? Out of all the places she could be, exactly! She just had to go make me fetch her in the creepiest room of all these places. Is she doing this to get her own back on me for being late? Whatever, I'll just go. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll feel better about being in this place. I make my way carefully up the staircase. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that they're... I chose the real estate when I could have picked up a career that didn't involve strange abandoned houses. Ooh, that's nice. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greeted me. The hallway had two wings, the east wing and the west wing. The two master bedrooms and the liberty was situated in the east wing. Meanwhile, I faced the west wing, which held the conference room and theatre room, and at the end of the hall, a simple wooden door upstairs the attic. Unlike the grand staircase though, the staircase that led to the attic are deep, steep and were made of rocks. What? If I am not too careful, I could easily stumble and fall. Thank God! It's still daytime. With how old the place was, there was no light fixtures and uh, there is light fixtures actually there. And I needed a candle flashlight to make my way around. Reaching the top, the door opened to the maid's quarters. Well, fuck my face. Oh, it looks exactly as it had been since the last time I was here. Full of dust, worn out and faded time. Did the cleaning crew miss this room? Uh, cleanliness is the least of my concerns right now. The more passing matter is Rose. She's not here! Bloody hell! <laughs> she, is she British? Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? No, no, I couldn't have been a dream, and I'm sure she said she was here in the attic. After all, the creepy ambience of the estate is doing much a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake. Maybe this is just a prank. Or maybe that phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got to her. Oh, shut up, woman! Ah, oh, shut up, brain. Exactly! You're not helping. Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, then where is she? That's it, I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. We must have arranged the spirits living here. I knew disturbing the mansion was a bad idea right from the very start. No, but nobody listens, but fucking realistic. Oh, they're swearing in this game. They said they think I'm Coco because I believe the curse and the ghosts and all that. My, me and my outlandish backwater country beliefs. I always strive to be a model employee, but not this time. No, I'm turning back for the sake of my sanity. We'll do it then! Brayer reality can find another agent who is more fucking re <laughs> realistic than me to uh, tour people around this haunted house. Before turning back, I take one last look at the gloomy old room. Huh? What's that? What? My worries about Rose Whereabouts must have cursed me to miss it when I first entered the room, but there's clearly something on the floor. Where? I can't see shit. It looks like 
a letter. It's a letter lying on the ground just a couple of inches away from my feet. Well, I can't see it. Out of sheer curiosity, I lean down and pick it up. She's pretty. Strange, I didn't recall seeing this letter the last time I was here. A few days back, a few agents and I were exploring the mansion to prepare for today. I had been the last... I had been the last to look inside the attic and leave. This certainly hasn't been here before. Who left the letter? Someone must have been in this room since then. Did Rose leave this for me? Was she here a while ago? I, I could have missed her, though. Could I? There's only one set of stairs to and from the attic. Only one way to find out. The letter isn't exactly in pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather ancient. The paper is so thin and rough, I'm worried that it'll fall apart as I touch it. I need to be careful. I open it, and what I read shook me to my core. Fuck me! Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me! I open it. Okay. Wow, what? It's the letter. It's filled with nothing but the words help me written in crimson shaded pen. Or blood. I gulp. <laughs> the same phrase just keeps on going on and on until... Send this to five people or else. What? Send this to five people or else? Or else what? Or else what? As quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper. I peek into the envelope to make sure I'm not missing out on the second page. But there's nothing. No, no, please no. My hands are trembling and dread creeps over me. I start to realise that this room is suddenly getting colder. I need to get out of here. Folding the paper in half, the sight that greets me next has me frozen on the spot. feet enters my field of vision covered in gaping wounds with skin eating away revealing fresh bone and all manner of things one isn't meant to see nerves and veins are exposed and oh my god a grotesque display a foot rested at a painfully odd angle and all the toenails seem to have fallen off leaving only the decayed remains of infected nail beds in their wake she needs a manicure i can't feel fire raising in my throat at the gory sight it's too much. All of it is too much. I want to make a break for the door and run, scream through anything, but my feet won't budge. I feel trapped in my own body, glued to the floor out of terror. The only sight that I am still alive is the sound of breathing heart that echoes in my ears and the... the I need to calm down. <laughs> the tremor that constantly runs through my body. I'm not answering the phone! I'm definitely not breathing. Or maybe I am, but Lord knows, it certainly doesn't feel like it. I open my mouth to say something, but the words caught in my throat. I'm completely paralysed and frozen on the spot. I want to cry. I, I don't know what I should do. Lord, please help me. Bravely look up, close my eyes and pray. Well, that's none of those are good! Oh my god. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a fish by its toe. If it bites, let it go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Oh, fuck. I need to face it, whatever it is this feet belong to, I need to face it. And if I'm going to die, they're going to kill me. At least I won't know what the killer looks like. A cold comfort. Look up, for fuck's sake! I can feel the tears forming in the corner of my eyes, and the whole body trembles still. I've never felt this vulnerable in my entire life. I take a deeper breath, summon every ounce of courage I have left in me, and shift my gaze upwards. <laughs> ah! <laughs> what? what? P -p -p Please don't hurt me. Oh, all right. You're smiling. That's a good thing, right? No! Without thinking, I scramble towards the door and up to my feet. Oh, fuck! I struggle to open the door, but they wouldn't budge. Stay, stay away. Go away. Please, Lord, make it away. I, I completely agree with her. Why now? Why won't you open now? My heart sinks. It really dawns in. I'm locked in, locked with that thing. Let me out! Let me out, Lord, please let me out! I feel it slowly approach me as I wrench the door. Don't fucking come towards me, please. Ah! Z! 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 Fucking Z! Yes. The door finally swings open and I couldn't have been more happier. Oh, fuck. 
Wasting no time, I leap out of the door and don't look back. My pounding feet against the floor are like complete of drums in rhythm with the loud, fast beating of my heart. My chest feels so tight like it's going to burst, but by the time I run past the hallway, I find myself at the grand staircase. But that's nothing compared to the feeling of hope the sight of the exit gives me. Racing down the stairs, a breathing... Uh, what? My shoe slips and I find myself falling. Ow. And still my back hits the ground and pain wrecks my body. Holy shit falls. I feel my head grow fuzzy and my vision dims even as I figure, as I fight to stay awake. No. G go. Away. The last thing I see are those feet before all I know is darkness. Oh shit. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Dazzlers. Um, it's quite interesting, right? It's a different style of game than what uh, we've we played um, on Daz Games. I like story-driven games. I like point-and-click. It's, it's, it's a genre I never thought I'd enjoy, but Fran Bo changed all of that for me. Um, the story seems pretty good. The characters um, are pretty well made up. You can definitely see that it's heavily influenced by like what they said, like the ring and like corpse party and stuff. And the full game apparently um, is very dark and, you know, it's on Kickstarter right now. It's up for Steam Greenlight. So, I mean, I'll leave the links if you guys want to vote for it. Uh, is this a game that you want to see more of on Daz Games? Do you want to see more type of these games? Let me know in the comments. Like this video if you like the video. Like, love, caress my channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Stay dazzling.